the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, President Anurag Kumar Desanayake's government has reiterated its dedication to collaborating with the International Monetary Fund to support Sri Lanka's economic recovery while ensuring alignment with its mandate. According to provisional data from the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, tourist arrivals to Sri Lanka exceed 100,000 in the first 17 days of the month. On the second trading day of the week, the market continued its downward trend, extending the negative momentum from earlier in the week. Both the S&P SL20 and the ASPI ended slightly lower. And the Nasdaq and S&P 500 rose, fueled by anticipation of Nvidia's earnings, while Tesla shares jumped on hopes of favorable Trump administration policies. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening, and thank you for joining us. The government of President Anurag Kumar Desanayake has reaffirmed its commitment to working closely with the International Monetary Fund to drive Sri Lanka's economic recovery while staying aligned with its mandate. Senior Mission Chief Peter Brewer, along with the IMF delegation, met with President Anurag Kumar Desanayake and key ministers of the newly formed government at the Presidential Secretariat yesterday to discuss next steps in the IMF program. The IMF team congratulated President Desanayake and his government on their decisive electoral victory, expressing optimism about the partnership moving forward. In response, the president emphasized his administration's commitment to fulfilling the people's mandate and reaffirmed that the success of the IMF program would depend on rebuilding public trust in governance. In his discussions, the president stressed the importance of addressing the pressing challenges faced by citizens, urging the IMF to adopt a balanced approach that takes into account the hardships of population. He assures the IMF delegation that this government would prioritize social spending to tackle critical issues including child poverty malnutrition and providing greater support for differently abled individuals Sri Lanka has achieved a significant milestone in fostering entrepreneurship ranking 4th on the Global Entrepreneurial Network leaderboard according to the Information and Communication Technology Agency this marks a notable improvement with the country climbing 3 positions from 7th place last year ICTA Associate Chief Digital Economy Officer Sachindra Samararatna attributed the progress to the growing supportive ecosystem for entrepreneurships particularly at the early stages of their journey he shared this update during the official launch of Global Entrepreneurship Week 2024 held at the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce in Colombo yesterday. Tourist arrivals to Sri Lanka surpassed 100,000 within the first 17 days of this month according to provisional data from the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority. Sri Lanka welcomed a total of 103,315 international visitors from November 1st to 17th. marking a 21% increase compared to the same period last year. The daily average of arrivals during this period reached 6077 up from 5005 a year ago and 4189 just a month earlier. The steady growth in tourist numbers follows a strong performance in October when arrivals surged by 24.95% year on year to 135907 rebounding from a slowdown in September which had seen growth dip to single digits from first time this year. Despite ongoing travel advisories, the situation has improved with several countries, including the United States and Israel, lifting their travel warnings related to potential terrorist threats in the popular surfing destination Arugambe. If the current trend continues, Sri Lanka is on track to welcome approximately 182,310 tourists by the end of this month, coming close to Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority's conservative projection. of 182,693 arrivals for the month. In an optimistic scenario, the CLTD anticipates a total of 198,069 tourists for this month. Sri Lanka's tea production for October of this year decreased to 21.15 million kilograms, an 8% decline compared to 23 million kilograms produced in the same month last year. According to industry data released yesterday, the decline was observed across all elevations when compared to October 2023. However, in comparison to October 2022, tea production saw a notable 11% increase, rising by 2.16 million kilograms from 8 
18.99 million kilograms cumulatively. Tea production from January to October of this year reached 217.65 million kilograms, reflecting a modest 0.5% increase over the 216.49 million kilograms produced during the same period in 2023. While medium and low growns recorded positive growth, the high growns category showed a decline for the year. Let's take a short break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. On the second trading day of the week, the market experienced a downward movement, continuing the negative momentum from earlier in the week. The S&P SO20 closed marginally lower and the ASPI also reflected a net decline. To provide further insights, we connect with Anjali Matthews from First Capital Holdings. Today, the Colombo Stock Exchange experienced a slight downturn compared to the upward momentum experienced during the previous sessions. The all-share price index closed at 13,105, losing 126 points and marking a 0.95% decrease from the previous day. This follows a period of exceptionally high all-share price index levels achieved during the past few days with yesterday recording an almost three-year high in ASPI. The top contributors towards the negative index were John Keel's Holdings, Hatton National Bank, Sampath Bank, Commercial Bank and the National Development Bank. And similarly, the S&P SL20 index also experienced a decline, closing at 3,930, losing 50 points and marking a 1.26% decrease from the previous day. Turnover, however, remained robust, closing at rupees 6 billion and marking an 8.2% increase from the previous day. Banks, capital goods and food, beverage and tobacco sectors were the top contributors to turnover, where the banking sector accounted for 14.2% of overall turnover. The top gainers of the day were Blue Diamonds Jewelry Non-Voting, SMB Finance Non-Voting, Blue Diamonds Jewelry Voting and Ceylon Printers PLC. And the top losers of the day include National Lanka Finance, UB Finance, SMB Finance Voting and Office Equipment PLC. The Colombo Stock Exchange has shown negative momentum early in the week, reflecting a downward trend. This highlights the resilience of the Sri Lankan market amidst ongoing global economic fluctuations. But to offer further insights, we spoke with Ranjan Ranathunga from First Capital Holdings. Having continuously gained since presidential election that took place in September 2024, ASPI has gained by 18% during the past two months. The growth was largely supported by the newfound stability in the political arena which was absent since April 2022. Since hitting a two-year high of 13,430, ASPI recorded a profit-taking session yesterday, with investors realizing gains from banking and blue-chip shares. During the ongoing week, we expect the Colombo Boards to experience profit-taking sentiment as investors continue to reshuffle their portfolios. However, Going forward, the positive sentiment surrounding equities is expected to continue towards the foreseeable future as fundamentals continue to support investment in equities. The prevailing low interest environment and lack of alternative investment in the, uh, in the investment arena, uh, coupled with the improving corporate profitability, recovering economic indicators and improving business margins is expected to support the profitability and the boss going forward. Based on the first capital research expectations, we expect the SPI index to reach 13,500 by December 2024 and reach 15,000 by next year end. Thank you. Gold prices rose for the second consecutive session today, reaching a one-week high as the U.S. dollar pulled back from its recent peaks. Investors are closely monitoring upcoming statements from Federal Reserve officials for further clues on potential interest rate cuts, which has added to the positive momentum in the precious metal. Spot gold increased by 0.3%, reaching $2,619.50 per ounce, the highest level since November 12th. The price surge follows 
a 2% gain yesterday as gold rebounded from a two-month low hit just last Thursday. Meanwhile, U.S. gold futures also saw a rise, adding 0.4% to reach $2,623.70 per ounce. Oil prices slipped today, pressured by the restart of production at Norway's Johan Sverdrup oil field. However, investor caution, fueled by concerns over a potential escalation in the Russia-Ukraine conflict, limited the extent of the decline. Brent crude futures were down 0.8%, trading at $72.74 per barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures slipped 0.6% to $68.73 per barrel. Equinor has resumed partial production at Johann Sverdrup, Western Europe's largest oil field, following a power outage. The disruption has helped push prices up by over 3% yesterday, but with production now back online, the market saw a pullback. The Sri Lankan rupee has strengthened further against the U.S. dollar today, showing continued improvement compared to yesterday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Both the buying and selling rates of the U.S. dollar have decreased. And now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is faring against other global currencies. Short break now. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back. The Adani Group has initiated a 250 megawatt wind power project in Mana as part of its broader renewable energy investments in Sri Lanka. The Adani Group's 250 megawatt wind power project in Mana is expected to be completed by next year. With an estimated investment of $250 million, the project aims to support Sri Lanka's renewable energy goals and create up to 2,000 local jobs during both construction and operation. Located in the Mana district from Northern Province, it is one of the largest wind power projects currently under development in the country. Since the new government took office, various perspectives have emerged, particularly regarding large-scale projects initiated by pre since the new government took office, various perspectives have emerged, particularly regarding large-scale projects initiated by the previous administration. While it's essential to review and scrutinize such projects for potential issues, it's equally important to ensure that the investment climate is not undermined. Given Sri Lanka's economic recovery since 2022, maintaining investor confidence is crucial. It's worth noting that any projects involving illegality or contrary to Sri Lanka's national interest should not be proceeded. Recently, concerns have been raised in the media regarding the Adani wind power project, with critics citing issues such as procedural irregularities, with excessive power purchase agreement prices, alignment with global standards, environmental impact and long-term national interest. <laughs> Professor P. N. D. Fernando officially assumed office as the chairperson of People's Bank yesterday in a ceremony held at the bank's head office. The event was attended by the CEO and GM Clive Fonseca and the senior management team of the bank. Professor Fernando brings over 25 years of experience in finance, banking and higher education. He is a respected academic, having served as the professor and head of the Department of Finance at the University of Kalanir. With more than 27 years in teaching, Professor Fernando is widely recognized for his pioneering contributions to the academic sector, including the introduction of innovative degree programs and his significant role in advancing the standards of financial education in Sri Lanka. Hella Apparel Holdings PLC has reported a significant turnaround in its financial performance for the quarter ending 30th September, marking a return to operating profit for the first time in eight quarters. Hella Apparel Holdings PLC has posted a strong financial performance for the quarter ending 30th of September, marking a return to operating profit for the first time in eight quarters. This positive result reflects a recovery in demand across key export markets and highlights the successful outcomes of the company's ongoing restructuring efforts. 
the Hello Group's revenue surged by 36.5% year on year, reaching 23.4 billion rupees in the second quarter in the financial year 2024 and 25. This growth was primarily driven by contribution of newly established branding license division following the acquisition of UK-based Focus Brands in January this year. Additionally, the private label manufacturing division benefited from the ongoing recovery in demand from its key brand partners in the US and Europe. Profitability saw a marked improvement with gross profit increasing by 222.9% year on year to 4.5 billion rupees. Notably, the manufacturing division achieved a gross profit margin of 16.6% in the second quarter, the highest in 14 quarters. This was driven by enhanced capacity utilization and a strategic shift in the customer mix toward higher margin apparel brands. <laughs> Union Assurance has signed a memorandum of understanding with the University of Sri Jayawardenepura to enhance educational opportunities and foster knowledge sharing. This partnership aims to equip graduates with the skills needed for success in the job market by aligning academic programs with industry needs. The MOU establishes a collaborative framework offering training programs and internships for undergraduates, bridging the gap between academic theory and professional practice. Through mentorship and hands-on learning, Union Assurance is committed to empowering the next generation of talent for the evolving business landscape. Associated Motorways Limited is celebrating a decade of successful partnership with New Holland Tractors as its exclusive distributor in Sri Lanka. Since the inception of their partnership, AMW has remained steadfast in its commitment to supporting Sri Lanka's agricultural sector by providing reliable equipment and unmatched service to the farmers across the country. To celebrate this decade-long celebration and in recognition of the ongoing Maha season, AMW organized a series of complimentary inceptions for loyal customers nationwide. Throughout last month, AMW's expert service teams visited key agricultural hubs, including Mulativ, Horupatana, Batiklu and Samantrai, to carry out these free inspections. The goal of the campaign was to ensure that New Holland tractors were in peak condition ahead of the crucial planting season. With over 100 inspections completed, the initiative highlighted AMW's unwavering dedication to supporting local farmers, helping them maintain their equipment and ultimately safeguarding their livelihoods during this vital time of the year. Let's take a short commercial break now. Global business updates coming on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asian stocks rose today while US bond yields and the dollar eased from multi-month highs as traders awaited President-elect Donald Trump's cabinet selection and assessed the outlook for potential Federal Reserve easing. Tech stocks gained following Wall Street's recovery from last week's sharp losses, although Nvidia's upcoming earnings report tomorrow limited significant moves. Markets also reduced their expectations for a quarter-point interest rate cut at the Fed's December meeting, with the profitability dropping to just under 59%, down from nearly 62%. The previous day, according to CME FedWatch. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 closed higher, recovering some losses as investors anticipate quarterly earnings from AI leader Nvidia and Tesla shares jumped on the prospect of favorable policy changes from the incoming Trump administration. Wall Street's main indexes closed mixed on Monday, with the tech-heavy Nasdaq ending higher thanks to another surge in shares of Tesla. The Dow ended slightly lower, the S&P 500 gained about four-tenths of a percent, and the Nasdaq added six-tenths. Tesla, whose shares have surged roughly 30 percent since the November 5th election, jumped more than five and a half percent Monday, following a Bloomberg report that said members of President-elect Donald Trump's transition team were seeking to ease rules for self-driving cars. Meanwhile, investors were also gearing up for NVIDIA's third-quarter earnings on Wednesday. The AI chip designer has powered 20 percent of the S&P 500's return over the past year, and many, including B of A Global Research, are expecting another blowout quarter. NVIDIA's shares fell on Monday, however, after a report said its new AI chips were overheating in servers. 
Among other movers, CVS Health's shares gained more than 5 percent after the health insurer said it would add four new members to its board in an agreement with Glenview Capital Management. With the key holiday shopping season set to begin, results from major retailers this week, including Walmart, Lowe's and Target, will be closely watched to gauge the strength of the U.S. consumer. Xiaomi's drive towards electric vehicles appears to be a success. The Chinese electronics maker posted a 30.5% jump in third quarter revenue. Consumers have bought up its first EV, the SU7 sedan, which launched in March. Xiaomi's drive towards electric vehicles appears to be a success. The Chinese electronics maker posted a 30.5% jump in third quarter revenue Monday. Consumers have bought up its first EV, the SU7 sedan, which was launched in March. It caught attention with its price tag of under $30,000 for the base model. That was $4,000 cheaper than the base model for Tesla's Model 3 in China. Xiaomi raised its sales target on Monday and now aims for sales of 130,000 this year. That's far more than an initial goal of 76,000. Revenue came in at $12.77 billion for the quarter ended September 30th, beating analyst forecasts. Xiaomi held its position as the world's third largest smartphone maker with shipments of 42.8 million units. Research firm Canalys said that was up 3% and captured 14% of the market. Well, that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report for today. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest updates in the business globe. Until then, I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.